so we are on to the apple uh, incorporation page of reuters and we will see if we can apply uh, the technique that we've learned on one of the uh, stocks listed the relative valuation technique so using the uh, reuters page i have chosen the competitors have so we have uh, the data of sony hp and microsoft now this is not uh, exactly matching the business model but it's more or less uh, similar so what we will do is we will use data of sony hp and microsoft and using that data we will perform a valuation on apple is that fine so now we are on to sony and we have the price earning ratio oh, we don't have a price earning ratio wonderful okay let's forget it yes hp we have a price earning ratio which you can write down is 10.49 microsoft 27.73 now we have a really small sample just just two variables now calculate an average of these two numbers average of hp and microsoft price earning ratio how much is that 19.1 .1. now what reuters has already given us is the industry and sector price earning ratio which is of roughly of about 15 now what we would do is instead of using uh, just the number that we've calculated based on two samples maybe we can make use of 15 what this 15 means is on an average in that industry stocks are trading 15 times of their earning per share now the earning per share of apple is 8.66 dollars what is the meaning of this ttm trailing 12 months that means is this a leading price earning ratio or trailing price earning ratio trailing. trailing price earning ratio based on actual prices so eps is 8.66 and on an average stocks are trading 15 times of eps can you find out what would be the intrinsic value of apple intrinsic value how much about 130 so based on the relative valuation intrinsic value is 130 and what is the market price 109.69 so what is the conclusion the stock based on our naive relative valuation is undervalued and since it is undervalued what would be the conclusion that we can buy the stock is that fine however this decision we got this decision based on the trailing 12 months data but most of the analysts rather than using the trailing multiples they would prefer to use leading multiples so we can also calculate the leading price earning ratio of apple so you would find this analyst section where they'll provide a lot of uh, forecasted data so this is analyst recommendations and revisions that means right now about 18 analysts are recommending buy 18 are recommending outperform 11 are recommending hold this is a very standard template that you would get in most of the database uh, provider services consensus estimate so building this consensus by itself is a big business what you do in a consensus building uh, scenario is you go and call up all the analysts you ask them what is your forecast of apple's revenue for year ending 2016 okay and then you talk to 10 15 20 people and then take an average of that so if you would observe that the forecasted revenue is given as 244 656 in 1000 us dollars is it in is it's in millions in million us dollars in the same fashion they have also given us earning per share and next year earning per share expected is how much 9.78 so what they have done what reuters have done it has spoken to 47 analyst and asked them what is your forecast of apple earning for september and 2016 then it took all those and then it calculated an average and that average is coming out to be 9.78 so we can also calculate a leading price earning ratio So what is the current market price? One zero nine. 
so current market price of 109 and forecasted earning per share of 9.78 how much is the leading price earning ratio 11.14 and then again in the same fashion we can calculate this for other companies and then perform a relative valuation is that making sense let's also do it on uh, one sector of indian stocks so i'm on money control we are on to the merico financials okay the price to earning ratio is given to us is this visible the eps is given as 9.13 which is here and and the industry price earning ratio industry price earning ratio is given as 50.86 so eps 9.13 industry price earning ratio 50.86 can you multiply these two 464.35 464.35 and then we can compare this with the actual market price and actual market price is 400 so based on relative valuation your conclusion would be to your conclusion would be to buy the stock or you would say it is relatively undervalued is that making sense so what we are essentially doing here is we are comparing intrinsic value versus the market value and if intrinsic value is more then the stock is if intrinsic value is more then the stock is undervalued if intrinsic value is less then the stock is overvalued. overvalued and if they are same then it is correctly valued are you fine with this now this conclusion we can derive just by looking at the price earning ratio for example on an average in this industry stocks are trading at 51 times of their eps whereas this stock is trading how many times 43 so since the price earning ratio is less just by looking at this we can say the stock is undervalued make sense let's do it one more time hindustan unilever okay so again price earning ratio 43 industry pre 52 and by looking at this again our conclusion would be stock is relatively undervalued are you fine here now next point in your notes this formula that i'm presenting i'm going to mark this as a five star so most popular question asked in equity valuation interviews the formula that we are looking at is enterprise value divided by ebitda enterprise value divided by ebitda and what we want to learn now is the intuitive understanding of this concept of enterprise value so before i throw a formula you observe the analysis here carefully this is the balance sheet of organization on the left hand side we will write equity and liabilities on the right hand side we will write assets so let us say we have equity here we have debt here then assets are divided into two parts the first assets we are going to call them as operating assets the operating assets of the business and the second set of assets are cash plus short term investments what we want to do is we want to understand that what is the value placed by the investors on operating assets of an organization okay for example let us say we are uh, looking at the business model of apple it will have two sets of assets we know that apple is sitting on a large cash pile but and that cash pile is earning them some income correct but is investing a core business of apple no it is not their core business their core business is maybe their core business is 
coming up with different softwares and different hardwares in different segments so we want to understand what is the value of their operating assets not the total assets and more in particular the value placed by market value placed by market for operating assets value placed by market for operating asset now it is impossible for us to directly go on start valuing that asset one by one so what alternate approach we can do is we can go to the market and find out what is the market value of total equity is it possible to find it out market value of total equity can we also find out what is the market value of debt and if market value of debt is not available we can simply use book value especially if it's a bank loan then the market value book value would be same so once we have market value of equity plus market value of debt we have the entire left hand side and if you have the entire left hand side will it be also same as the entire right hand side yes but we do not want the entire right hand side we want operating assets so once you remove the cash and investments from this automatically will you get the value of operating assets and this value of operating assets is referred to as enterprise value so what is the formula market value of equity plus market value of debt minus cash and short term investments so please write down quickly have we done now how to use this let us say there are three companies that we are looking at company a company b company c we have their enterprise values available with us so in millions enterprise value is 100 500 and 1000 then we try to understand that those operating assets are generating what amount of operating profit can i say ebitda is cash operating profit so the way enterprise value does not include investments in the same fashion ebitda does not include return on investments so we just looking at that those operating assets are earning how much operating income is that making sense see on the balance sheet we just found out the market value of operating assets or the value placed by investors on operating assets and there were cash and other investments so these investments earned a profit of 600 and these investments earned an interest of 200 so when we take ebitda we are just taking this 600 ebitda is the operating profit earned we are not considering the 200 because enterprise value is only the operating assets is that making sense now so now we have enterprise value we have ebitda let us say ebitda of this organization is 20 ebitda of this organization is uh, 100 i'm just keeping it hypothetical ebitda of this organization is 200 okay so we can so we can calculate ev by ebitda ratio okay it would be nice if you don't write i'll give you time to write what it means is that for company a the enterprise value is 5 times of its ebitda are you following this similar to price earning ratio that if the price is this much how much is the earning so market value of operating assets is 100 and operating profit is 20 so ev is being valued at 5 times of its ebitda so this is 5 this is 5 and this is 5 because i made it that way and then we can calculate an industry average an industry average is how much 5 now let us say there is a company d this company d has a ebitda of 500 the moment it is got ebitda of 500 we can find out that enterprise value 
of this company should be 500 into 5 which is 2500 so by the logic of the fact that enterprise value should be 5 times of the EBITDA company D's enterprise value should be 2500 now how is enterprise value calculated don't write please observe enterprise value is equal to market value of equity plus market value of debt cash and short term investments we have calculated that for company D enterprise value is 2500 can you find out what would be the market value of debt of an organization so maybe let us say market value of debt was 700 then you also went on to the balance sheet and you tried to find out how much was the cash let us say cash on the balance sheet was 200 so by doing some manipulation we can find out what should be the market value of equity and in this example it is how much it would be 2000 and then this equity market value is not the market value in reality I mean it is not the price at which the stock is trading but it is the price at which it should trade assuming there is a EV by beta multiple of 5 in the market which means this 2000 is the intrinsic value of the stock and then this intrinsic value you can compare with the market value and then you can decide whether the stock is undervalued or overvalued so we can come up with a formula where we can say market value of equity market value of equity is equal to enterprise value minus market value of debt plus cash and other short term investments so now you can write down quickly Are we done? Let us see if we can apply this concept to a real life scenario. We will stick to uh, the FMCG sector in India. And what we can do is we can calculate the EV by EBITDA multiple of uh, Dabur. Use that EV by EBITDA multiple and using that multiple find out valuation for HOL. So let us first calculate market value of equity for market value of equity can we simply use the market cap will that be correct yes so then write down in crores 48303 point seven seven so Dabur market cap 48303 is it done now second thing that we need is to calculate enterprise value we need we also need the market value of debt and we also need cash and short term investments so for that we will have to open up the balance sheet so I'm opening a consolidated balance sheet okay so since the market value of debt is not available we will simply take the book value of debt since we don't have an established bond market in India, generally the values would be same. So write down total debt 733.56 crores. 733.56 crores. So we have total of equity, we have total of debt. What do we need more? Cash and short term investments. So we can simply use cash and bank balance which is 276 crores 276 crores hmm? 1 crore is equal to 10 million hmm? 1 crore is 10 million so now say market value of equity plus market value of debt minus cash and bank balance and tell me what is the enterprise value 48761 so, so enterprise value is 48761 let's look at the EBITDA now EBITDA we can get from the let's see if we can get it from profit and loss 
so we will use pbdit profit before depreciation interest and tax the amount is given as 1052 so help me with enterprise value how much 4876 one divided by 1052 how much is this 46.35 so the ev by ebitda multiple of dabar is 46.35 that means markets are valuing the operating assets of dabar 46 times of their operating profit or 46 times of their ebitda now with this logic and we will make a simplistic assumption that this is the industry average it is not but since we have limited time we will just say that this is the industry average and once we have 46.35 let us go to hindustan unilever now let us directly look at their ebitda values so ebitda value of hindustan unilever is 64690.93 so to this ebitda we can multiply with ev by ebitda multiple which was 46.35 and that would give us the implied enterprise value 300 is because of the decimals 300854 or more or less similar to that maybe a few crores uh, up and down but more or less 300 800 is the valuation this is the enterprise value is this the value of equity is this the value of equity no so from this we will have to now reduce market value of debt so let us go on to their balance sheet now okay so market value of debt let me open up the consolidated yes market value of debt is how much 43 crores so what should we do with that 43 now minus so we'll say minus 43 plus what should we add cash so cash which is here 2689 So enterprise value minus the debt plus cash, how much? Three zero three five seven zero zero. So three zero three five zero zero is the valuation of the equity, but this is the valuation of the entire equity, the total equity of the firm. This we have to divide by number of shares. so that we will understand what is the per share valuation so number of shares let us see if we can find that in income statement okay so in lakhs we have uh, is this visible to you here this value 21634 but we'll have to convert that to crores that means we'll have to multiply that with 100 so 303 500 divided by 2163465 aha uh-huh. <laughs> yes i'm so sorry yes it should actually be 216 wow well, that's such a gross mistake 216.34 and the valuation is coming out to be 1402 so this is your valuation as per the ev by ebitda multiple and this we can compare with the actual market price which is 858 and then what is the conclusion stock is undervalued how you find you how did i calculate what this okay the question he asked is uh, how did i calculate the market average so i did not calculate the market average we calculated ev by ebitda of dabar 
and we assume that that is the market rate ideally what you should be doing is if there are 10 stocks uh, in the sector you should calculate eva by beta for 9 take an average and then use that for the 10th one but in this case we made a simplistic assumption that this is the market average are we doing fine next trading in the notes asset based valuation so this is your balance sheet let's say we have uh, three assets on the balance sheet right now we have a building which is being shown at 5000 then we have uh, furniture which is being shown at 3000 and we have cash 2000 we have equity 6000 debt 4000 number of shares that we we should is 100 so when you do asset based valuation you will try to find out what is the market value of this building and let us say market value of this building is 10000 then you try to find out what is the market value of furniture and let's say it is only 1000 cash will always remain as it is it would generally not change unless and until it is zimbabwe so cash is 2000 let us say apart from this company has one more asset which is not come on the balance sheet so we have learned ifrs us gap we know that in us gap research expenses research is expensed and development is development is also expensed in ifrs research expense development capitalized so it is quite possible that there is an intangible asset which is not on the balance sheet but it exists in the real life scenario right so maybe something like let's say a patent so that patent is worth 5000 but it was not there on the balance sheet possible then market value of this debt is 4000 plus also currently there is a tax litigation happening with the company the liability is not <clears throat> the court proceedings are still on we haven't got the results but there is a high probability that in that tax litigation we'll have to pay or incur a liability of 1000 so even though it's not on the balance sheet right now for valuation purpose if you feel that it's very probable that we'll have to pay that liability you'll have to bring it on the balance sheet so a tax liability of let us say 1000 and then you can take a total of all the market value of the assets so 15 16 18000 the all the outsiders liability 5000 so total of all the assets 18000 minus outsiders liability 5000 so total net worth of the company at market value is 13 divided by number of shares 100 so valuation per share would be how much 130 this is called asset based valuation using the fair value or using the market values are you fine here any questions you want to ask for today's session good